Hi guys, so I am actually doing this video at night and I'm in my pajamas because I wanted to show you guys the last five books, five books, one whole hand of books that I've read since the beginning of this month and all month in January. And I finished five books, so this is going to be a really long haul, like not haul video, but book review. And there's something for everybody, like there's horror, um cutesy, stuff like that, and I'll tell you where I got these books at and how much they cost. So the first book I got is this V.C. Andrews book, and if you follow me on um, Tumblr, I have a Tumblr account, and it's called Curl Up With A Good Book. I'll link it down below, or I'll just put my Tumblr thing on it, and I also, whenever time I finish a book on that Tumblr account, I um, do a little, like, mini-review on it, and I also do a review sort of on my Instagram account, and that's nat131313. 13, 13, 13. But anyway, this book I got at Walmart, and they still have it because the new book to this to this part came out. It's a V.C. Andrews book. It's a recent book because it's the diary of Christopher, it's Christopher's diary, Secrets of Fox, Foxworth. And this goes with the Flowers in the Attic book series. So the one thing I'm going to say about this book is is it's in three parts. It's like one part where she finds the diary. The diary part is the second part of the book. And then the third the third part is the epilogue. And I would suggest that you read the first book in the in the Flowers in the Attic book. So you I think you should read the Flowers in the Attic book first before you read this book. Because some of the stuff they edited it out. And some of the stuff um, is really, like, you have to read the book to understand most of it. But what I really don't like is, is that, you know, if you read the Flowers in the Attic book, and even if you saw the movie, it's sort of like, the only thing that's different is, is like, it's like a retelling of what happened in the Flowers in the Attic book. Because this is in Christopher's point of view, and some of the stuff talks about, like, before they went to um, the mansion and got stuck in the attic. But not a lot, and it's sort of like his opinion on sort of different things. But other than that, it's sort of like the same exact thing as reading the Flowers in the Attic book. It only goes up to a certain point in this book. I don't remember where it goes up to. I think it goes up to... I don't even remember. I can't even remember. I think it was the part um, where their mom hasn't been coming around a lot, and the brother and sister have to do the mother and father role in it, and mostly it's about the girl. The girl in this book is, like, a distant relative of the fox, well, the the four kids that were locked in the attic, and long story short, she finds the diary, and she starts reading it, and it's sort of like her point of view in it, so it's sort of like two stories in one, because it has a storyline of its own, and then the second storyline is, is her reaction to certain entries in the journal that she's reading. That's by Christopher in it. And I I got the second book. And the second book is at Walmart right now. I think this book was only like... This this book... Um, I think, don't think I showed it to you. This is what it looks like. It's not that interesting of a cover. It's like this. It's not really that long. I mean, it's like her other books where they're like 400 plus pages there's an excerpt from um the second book in the series the second book in the series is this christopher's diary echoes of dalliger and i think the, these books were both this book was 5.99 i think i'm not really sure but i think it is yeah and it's still at walmart that's where i got it at and it didn't take me a while to read it because it was really 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 good. It was, like, one of those books where, like, you didn't want to stop reading it because you wanted to see what happened in it. It was just so amazing. So, um, this book I got, the next book I'm going to show you is, like, an educational sort of book, and it's a really small, like, pocket book, and it's for, like, maybe, like, history buffs or, like, people who want to learn more about the Presidents of the United States. It's called The Book of Presidents. I got this at a book sale at one of my um, local libraries. And it was only, I think, 50 cents. And it's really small. They're all, there's only um, 128 
pages in this book. And this is what it looks like. It's just a small little book. It's really small. You see, it only took me a day to get through it. It doesn't go through all of the presidents. It only goes up to um, the 41st president of the United States, and that was George Bush, the father. And this is when his um, term was still starting, so there's not a lot about him. But each of the presidents in this book, there's little... Um, excerpts it's like it tells you like where they're born um how long they were president for when they died um um like who their parents were what their parents said their like early little life and then what they did as president and it goes sorry guys like my throat's really like scratchy right now but um it's really cute because each president's little bio is like two to four pages long depending on if the president did a lot of interesting things or um not you know it just depends and I really liked it It was really cute it was really educational to me because um some of the stuff I did know but there's like a few facts in here that I really didn't know because you know like some of the presidents we've had like we all know you know like George Washington and Lincoln and Kennedy and I don't know maybe like Ronald Reagan for some people Nixon but for the presidents that don't get a lot of, like, hype about, like, um, Garfield or um, Tyler or Taylor or even um, Arthur, Chester Arthur, or um, James K. Polk or even Ford, those um, have, like, some interesting things because, you know, we everybody knows in history, you know, all this stuff about all these classic presidents. But people don't focus on, like, the ones that were either in office for a little bit or they didn't just do a lot of great things. But whatever. But um, I really liked it. It was really cute. It doesn't take that long to read. And the words are really big. They're, like, this big on the page. So it doesn't really take that long. So the next book I read is it took me, like, a month to read it because I got this for Christmas. So it took me literally, like, half of January to finish it. Um, This is Stephen King's Revival. And this is what it looks like. Um, I liked it because, you know, this book is one of his great books, and it cost $30, but I think it was only, like, 25 at Walmart. I got this one at Walmart. Well, my mom got it at Walmart for me for Christmas present, but I know it was from Walmart. And it has 400-plus pages in it, and it has... Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry, guys. Um, it has, um, I don't even know how many, I think, like, 20-plus chapters in it. And I thought it was really, really good because it didn't have, you know, when, like, you get those, in most of the Stephen King books, if you read any of his books, there's, like, you get the chapters. It's chapter one, well, it's, like, in, it's in parts, and then it's in chapters, and then you have, like, chapter one, and then the name of the chapter, and then it has, like, a little one and then when he changes points of view throughout the whole book, it changes the thing. So it's like when it starts with a new character and that character interacting with different people, it starts a second little point point in it. But with this, which was really annoying to me, I don't know what, what those are even called. Like they're like subtext notes. I don't know. But I really like this book. Um, It's really good because you wouldn't... It's, like, you have to read the whole book. Like, it's really complicated to, like, explain it. But, um, you have to read it from the beginning to the end. Because if you don't, and if you don't pay attention to it, you're going to miss certain things. Because all the things, the preacher, pastor, whatever they call him in this book, I think it's pastor. All the things he does leads up to what he does at the end. And it's really, really, um, cool. It's, it's like revival, but it's not like a Frankenstein sort of thing. So it's so don't think it's like Frankenstein at all. It's like totally different and it's really good. Um it doesn't it took me a month to read. It took me like a month to read. Just because it's a big book and it's heavy and the words on the page are really, really small and the pages are bigger and a in a paperback book they're really big. Like this is how thick the book is. So the next book I got, I got this at the Dollar Store. I got this at Dollar Tree. They don't have them anymore at the Dollar Tree, so if you want to find it, you can't. It's called Dewey's Nine Lives, Legacy of a Small Town Library Cat Who Inspired Millions by Vicki Marin with Brett Witter.
first book she wrote. It's about this cat named Dewey. And um, she wrote a book. Vicky, Vicky is a librarian in a small town in Iowa. And she got the, she found this cat that was left in the library drop book bin. And she found it, and it became the library's, like, mascot, sort of. Everybody came in, and everybody loved this cat, and his name was um, Dewey, and that was the title of the first book. And then, um, I'm not going to spoil it or everything, but, um, because I, I didn't read the book. But, I mean, the first book, because I, I probably couldn't find it at all. This is the one that was at the Dollar Tree. And in this book, there are six short stories Plus an introduction about how this cat, the short stories about this cat and his friends and how people were writing into um, this librarian, Vicky, and she would get these touching stories about how cats changed her life. Because if you think about, you know, if you're not a cat person, like I'm sort of like a cat person, not really, just depends. Cats you don't think are... The creatures that would be, like, therapeutic to us, like dogs are, or I don't even know what else. But, um, these, there's stories in this book that are really, really, really sad. Like, there's this one, and I want to get into it, but, um, there's this one in it, and it's called Christmas Cat. And it's this girl, it's this woman who got the, who wanted to get a cat for her daughter for Christmas. And it was just her, she was a single mom, and they got this cat, and... When she went to go pick it up, she couldn't find it, and she found it in the toilet in the bathroom of the person she was going to get it from, because they thought that, because he was, like, a really, like, spunk, spunky cat, and they thought that she, um, that he just wanted to drink from the toilet, and he drowned, but he really didn't, he was alive, but the one thing is, is he had this disease where he couldn't eat solid food, they had to give him baby food for it. And he lived, and he was just so cute and so cute. And the woman was so determined to do that that she did it every day for this cat. She wouldn't let anybody else do it. They named it Christmas Cat, or CC for short, because they got it on Christmas. And it's just really cute stories. Some are really sad. Some are really cute. And it shows you a different side of cats, because you think, you know, cats aren't that... Um, they're not really that lovable, or they're not therapeutic, but this book gives a cat new, um, new life, new, a new light, not a new life, a new light in people's eyes, probably, and this is really good, it was only, I should write these down when I do it, um, 304, 304 pages, I don't know why I said it like that, and some of the chapters that are about different stories about the cats, and there's, no, there's nine chapters, sorry, there's nine chapters in this book, and they're so good, some are longer than others, and it comes with pictures of all the cats that are in it, and, um, Dewey and stuff like that, and this is what it looks like, I'll show you guys again, it's really good, um, especially if you like cat books, or you like animal fiction books, or animal animals that change people's lives. I don't know if this would be called, like, inspirational. I don't know. It's not fictional. It's actually a real... It's, like, a book about people's stories with their cats. So it's not fictional. It's non-fiction, I guess you could say. And this is what it looks like. This is the cat that, um... This is Dewey. That's the cat that the whole thing started, started of. So this book I got, it was uh, my mom, um, we go to flea market, me and my mom, well, my parents and me, we all go to flea markets, and at flea markets we find different books, and if you watch any of my previous videos, you know that Wanda E. Bronstetter, I don't know how you say her last name, and that's just a guess, she writes the best Amish books, like, People think, you know, Beverly Lewis is the best because of whatever, because her books are turned into movies and stuff. But hers are really the best because, I don't know how to describe it, but, you know, when you read different authors and they're by, they have this, uh, when you read different authors that you read in the same genre of books you like, you always know, okay, like, this author likes this kind of stuff, this author likes this kind of stuff. 
So with Rhonda E. Braun said, uh, her books are really better than um, Beverly Lewis's books. If you haven't read any of her books, I think I did. I did reviews on her books. Um, there in one of the book reviews that I've done, I did like so many. I don't. I have. I just haven't titled them at all anymore. But um, anyway, my mom got this one at a uh, flea market, and the thing with flea markets is, flea markets is, is like their books are really cheap. Like you can get some books, you can get like there, and they're only a dollar. Some are two dollars, but some of these books are like really cheap. And my mom got me this book, and I don't have the series for it because she got it at a flea market, and she doesn't know like what books I read by her. Or not so she just got me a few books one I've already read before but um this is called the Indian cousin yeah the Indian cousins the Indiana cousins and this is book two in the series and it's called a cousin's prayer and this has 44 chapters in it but this chapter is like really short if you read any of her books you know that her chapters and all of her books are usually really short but um this is what it looks like and it takes a while to get used to it. This book, I didn't read the first book, like I said. You know, my mom got it for me. She didn't see the other ones there, I guess. But she got me this one. And this book is really hard to get into because it tells, like, usually in the first chapter, it tells you what happened in the previous book. So you know what's going on. So I know, I know what was happening in it. Um... So about this Elmish girl, she, um, something happened to the person she was supposed to marry, and a couple other people, and she has to deal with it throughout the whole book, she deals with it, and, um, when I first started reading this book, I'm like, oh my god, like, all this girl does is complain, and she has panic attacks, and she's acting really weird, and happens every single chapter, and she doesn't talk about it to anybody or whatever, but then, um, halfway through the book, I don't even know, like, what chapter begins to get better, but something in the book changes the whole thing, and I'm like, oh my god, I really, really love this book. So this book is really, really good. Once you get into it, like halfway through, once you get into it, it's like the best book ever. And what I also like about Amish books is, is, you know, they always come with like little recipes in the back of the book. I never really tried them out at all, because some I really just don't think I would like. But, um... The one is Katie's Banana Nut Cake, and Katie is the main girl character in the book. And I really, really, really love it because, you know, some people, when you read a book and it's not that great, you either stop reading it or you just don't care. You just read the last couple of pages in the cha last chapter of the book or whatever. But these, this is really, really cute. I really like the story in this book. I mean, if I, what I, would I get the rest of the books in the series? Yes, I probably would. But, um, the thing with most Amish books, and this is like a sidetrack, and I think I talked about it so many times in different videos, is, is that when you read Amish books, and if you read a series, sometimes you don't need to really read the series like, in order, like, if you only get one book and it's not the first book, or you get, like, the four books and you don't have the third one, they usually have different storylines, but the people in the book are always the same in the, in the series. So that's really one book that I really, that's, like, one thing that I really like about those books. So, um, this is what the, um, book looks like. It looks like this. I got this at a flea market. I don't know if you can find it anywhere else. I don't know. I got it. I don't know how much it is. But her books are really good to get through. Like, they're, like, really easy to get through. They're, like, so, so good. So, that's the end of my, um, book review. I'll, um, link or I'll, um, leave my, um, Twitter, my Tumblr, my Instagram, um, account names in the description. If you want to follow me on any of those, um, platforms, you can. Please subscribe to me, um, click the description the subscribe button, come up below and tell me your favorite book you've read either in February or January or December, and I'll see you guys next time with another book review, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.